it was, right? Everyone sees that? Okay, so far so good. So now we can look at the value. Uh, you see the tooltip of cartograph actually display you what the value is. So we know what the value was before and what the value is now. So we can have a guess of how the algorithm works. Once again, we're only comparing with a storage, storage structure, not the algorithm. So we have to count on the game to actually reprocess the storage structure and sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. So. At that point, it's almost done, right? We know what to rewrite, we know where to write it, so it's basically just having spawning a thread, thread and writing the memory of the game. And do you want to see how it looked like? Okay, good. So here is uh, the video when you try to rewrite it. So it's an in-game visualization of it. Uh, so at you, as you see, uh, on the top, there is my opponent. I can't see it, so the fog of war. And we just rewrite it right now as we speak. So what will happen is it will pop and you will see that the game will really believe that, uh, see, here you go. And as you see, the game is completely full of believing that we can see everything, and our to uh, defense tower are starting to shoot as a unit. We can even click on the, on the building. It's completely invisible. At that point, you have a full map hack. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Thank you. So, how many of you did order StarCraft II? Oh, StarCraft II? Yes, just release, right? And some of yes, the most. Uh, so we wanted to show you how to do that for StarCraft 2. We didn't have time, sorry, but we have something for you. So this is StarCraft 2, and uh, we were we are not ready to. We tried to do it, but it was really quick. Game re been released two days ago. So what we have is we were able to find the minimap. Doesn't mean that we can rewrite it to actually make something useful of it, but we are able to find it in memory. If you see, it's just, a, it's just in mirror side, but you can see the minimap. So we are able to actually already find the minimap uh, from StarCraft 2. So it's really this approach can work on any uh, modern game we know. If you have any other idea of game you think we should try, you can just send us a tweet or email. We'll be happy to try. Uh, by the way, we're not going to release the tool. Sorry. And sometimes, you know, we were at the lab uh, really late at night and we tried a bunch of games and we have some unexpected effect. So we want just to show you one to see what odd thing we can come up with. So uh, I think it was like two, two months ago. Yeah, two months ago we tried to do Anno, which is a strategy game, and we were messing up with the visibility map. So we were trying one effect here and we are trapped running and we just tried to put our boat into the fog. Well, in a way we did succeed to find the map. <laughs> We just make it a fog permanent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the underlying reason why it's not working is because actually when you remove the fog, the algorithm do not reprocess the map. So you can't actually remove it because it's already removed. Just you don't know it. That's, that's some the kind of effect. Uh, we have a bunch of videos like this. Uh, in Civilization 4, for instance, we were able to have the map completely disappear. Don't see anything else. Uh, that's kind of side effect, right? So. When you tamper with memory, you never know what happened. Uh, a little bit about unit hacking. Uh, unit hack is way, way more harder uh, because this time, uh, what we're looking for is probably a few kilobytes of data. And so visualization won't work. You can't actually look at the map and say, here, here it is, and click on it. So we solely rely on um, shape analysis, which are algorithms we try to, to put. Uh, Jocelyn made a lot, a lot of effort on that. I think he spent night and days for about one, a month and a half on this. It's really hard to come up with an algorithm which helps you to find the structure with change and understand which structure. So we have one algorithm for each type of structure, stacks, um, chained list, uh, pointer list, and so forth. Uh, to give you an idea how we do that, we have a bunch of heuristics. So if you want to, decide to find a stack of pointer, what we do is we make sure that the memory we look considering is only having one integer added every time we create a unit. And we also make sure that uh, this uh, integer is a real pointer. So what we have under the hood is a dereferencing de algorithm, which look at the pointer and try to, to see where it points into the memory. Once again, it's easier said than done, and that's how we do that. Uh, the basic idea to narrow down the memory we are considering is simply the same idea. We build unit. We build unit, and every time we build a unit, the, uh, the possible place where the map, the unit list is, um, keeps decreasing until we have a very smart one, sh small one, sorry. So when we have this memory, we go back to our idea of using visualization. 
And here you go. This is a visualization of the um, unit list of uh, Age of Empire tree, I guess, on this one. Uh, as you see, we have only like a, a strip. Each strip represents one unit. So if you have five units, it's five strips. And the black void behind between each unit is basically a bunch of memory which is not related to the unit list. So it's really hard then when we have that, we have to figure out how the units work. Any idea how we do that? Yeah, you get the right idea. Exactly. So the way we do that is exactly like this. We go back to the idea of using a diff map. So we start with the unit which is completely blue. The memory of the memory of the unit would be blue because we don't move it, we don't do anything with it. And then to know where the coordinates of the unit are stored, we just make it move. And by make it move, uh, we're able to know which part of the memory change, so we know where the coordinates are. And then we have to figure out how the coordinate system works. And when we know that, we're able to have units which teleport across the map. Pretty cool hack. And the one we really like is uh, we try to have in invisible unit. And to do that, that's the way we do is we basically attack our own unit and we make it bleed, right? We, so we shoot at them and hopefully we know by looking where the HP decrease to know where the HP points are. And as a result, you get something like this, right? You get four units which are able to completely whip off a base because they're just not dying. Uh, look, you can notice that the, um, our health bar are black is because when we rewrite the memory, what happens is we probably uh, also rewrite the color of the bar. We have no way to tell where the color is because it also changed with the, uh, the, the health point. But as you can see, we are able to have invincible units, right? Pretty cool. Thank you. So now I'm going to tell you the sad part of the story. There is a sad part in the story. Uh, network, right? If you try to cheat on the game on the network side, well, here's what you get. Out of sync. We basically get out of sync because a lot of games actually do uh, some uh, type of uh, checking on the value of the number of units you have, uh, how much health points they have. Uh, for instance, if your unit is not dying on your side and is dying on the other side, that something is off. Um, so we have to deal with desynchronization. The way we have to do that is basically you, either able to, you are either able to resync or you basically get caught. Uh, what happened is for some hack, like the map hack, is not detectable by uh, this kind of integrated checking because all you, have to, all you are saying is I am able to see this map, which basically is not triggering that. But if you try to have invisible unit or tampering with the resources, then you get this. So. Uh, we, think we had actually to build on one idea which has been presented at DEF CON 15, and it was pretty cool, which was using the LSP. So the LSP is a uh, layer service provider. It's a functionality provided by WinSock, and it actually allows you to divert some of the traffic to uh, an application if you want. So what we did is we worked with uh, Pascal um, Ganaillet, which is a French guy, which helped us getting, get it run on Windows 7. He started his own project, and we were able to actually intercept packets. And with that, we are able actually to tamper with the traffic, uh, basically by first collecting it and then trying to rewrite it to resync the game. Uh, so the way we do that, we do four, four steps. The first one is we're going to bucket the traffic. Uh, when you have a game, you usually have four to seven type of packets. And the way we know there is five to seven type of packets is because these packets have a specific size. And so we're going to only focus on one size at a time because we can compare then what changed and what, not, what is not changing. And then we're going to visualize uh, how the, the change are. And then we try to understand it. Sometimes we are able to do it. Sometimes we are not able to do it. And finally, we are able to rewrite the packet. And by rewriting the packet, resync the game. So usually you, you, get, you end up with having not resync. We're not going to tell you how to cheat on a game on the network. Sorry. Uh, we're going to show you what the interface looks like, but it's up to you if you want to really apply it on, on a real game. We know it works. Uh, it's just like we don't want to be the one who should be blamed because everyone is starting to cheat at Supreme Corona 2 or that kind of famous game. Sorry. But here's the interface. Um, on the left, you have what we call the LSP listener. So the LSP is uh, live at the Windsor server, so we have to have a uh, IPC, which is going to speak with the um, 
with cartograph and cartograph will tell him whether to let the packet go or to modify it and then tell him to rewrite it with the specific value we want. Then we have all the bucket I was picking up before. So for instance, for civilization, for civilization four, there is five type of packets and which are sorted by size. And finally, you have the uh, visualization for each bucket. So we can visualize one bucket at a time. A little bit more on the, visual, on the visualization bucket view. Um, so the visualization bucket works like this. On the x-axis, you have the length of the packet. So the top, the right, most part is the last bit of the packet, byte of the packet, and the leftmost part is the first bit. So basically each block is one different bit of the packet. And on the y-axis is basically each packet are stacked up to the other, so we see the evolution of the, of the trace. And as you can see, uh, and on the top of it, uh, we have something different, which is blue and red, and you should be used by, to it by now. This is our diff map analysis for the trace. So it tells us which part of the packet are moving and which one is not. Uh, blue meaning not moving and red meaning it did change at some point. And by just looking and visualizing the, the trace, you can infer a lot of information on how the protocol works. Uh, if it's a fixed value, then you see it's the same color all over the place, right? Like the pink one on the screen. If it's a counter, uh, then that's where the, ha the heat map is really useful, is you're going to see a, a a gradient, do you see it on the screen? So basically you, saw, you see this is an increment. Every time it increments, it changes color by one. So you see a continuous gradient. This is, which means that it's probably a counter. So we don't really have to take care of this until we want to inject something more in it. And finally, you have this part on the right, which is completely look like scramble. It's usually either an IV or an encrypted value with a given key. Although they don't, the game we look at didn't have key exchange. So it's a little bit more subtle, it's just more like a, uh, specific value for each packet, as an IV. Um, before, Joe is going to try to do a demo real time for you. Uh, just a little bit more of what we're doing now. We didn't do that for only hacking game. What we really hope to do is building more crypto stuff to actually make the game more secure. Uh, we should have a lib, a lib ready about in three months uh, or four months, which actually will help developer to uh, build more secure games so this kind of attack won't work anymore. And we're also do working on trying to detect bot because I kind of hate when I, uh, I have a bot in front of me on World of Warcraft which gets there everything and I have end up with nothing. So let's pray all together the God of Demo and who wants to see uh, Cartograph real time? <laughs> so Joe, everyone is counting on you, for sure. Okay, so let's have this work. My micro. Do you hear me? Sorry. Okay. I don't know. No screen. Okay, but I have no screen in my side. Uh, uh, see something? Okay, okay. Sorry, technical problem. This one? No. This one? Yeah? Yeah. Ah. How oh, it goes there? I see nothing. Walking. 
Ich bin nicht mehr. 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 Ich b